There's a new contender for the best mid-size 3D printer crown. Today, I'm going to review a new FDM 3D printer that could unseat the very popular CR-10S. You don't want to miss it. Hey, I'm Richard with The First Layer, and on this channel, we do 3D printing tutorials, reviews, and live streaming videos to help you get the most out of your 3D printer. So if that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe and check the bell to get notified so you don't miss any of our future content. In 2017, Creality burst onto the, the scene uh, with the very popular CR-10 and followed it up with the CR-10S in 2018. This printer had a generous build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, certainly large enough for most projects. It was also more attractive to buyers because of its sub one thousand dollar price tag many 3d printing companies started to produce variations of this printer that had little to no improvements on the design that is until now the ming rock 3 a solid contender for the mid-size 3d printer crown let's get a closer look at this amazing printer compared to the d series ming rock 3 has been updated in many ways the biggest difference is the extruder the extruder is lighter stronger, and also supports dual gears to direct drive the filament and provides more efficient and more accurate printing. So that means you can print with a variety of materials, including PLA, PETG, and TPU. The Mingda Rock 3 comes equipped with the Mingda self-developed motherboard, which is built on the STM32 processor with five TMC2208 stepper drivers on the main board for virtually silent printing. If you decide to purchase this printer, be sure to check the firmware. You can do that by pressing the menu button, then the settings, and finally the, the info button. Check the Mingda website for the latest version of the firmware. At the time of this recording, it is version 2.8.2. Now, it also has dual Z axis lead screws to ensure more accurate and stable printing. The Rock 3 is also equipped with a filament runout sensor that will automatically sound to alert you and the printer will automatically stop working. Load new filament and continue your print. In the event of power loss to the printer, it will resume printing from the last recorded extruder position. A handy feature if you live in an area that suffers from brown and blackouts. While this is not a new feature for printers, it sure is handy to have. And finally, it has a removable magnetic build plate. The removable magnetic textured surface holds your print in place and allows you to remove your print without tools. The drawback is that you can't print over 80 degrees, otherwise the magnet can lose adhesion and ruin your effort. Now, there is a way around this. You could just use some binder clips to hold it in place. I personally would have liked to have seen a glass or metal flex plate here instead of the flexible magnet that they have. The Rock 3 has enough power to deliver to the stepper motors, hot end, build plate, and fans with a generic 350 watt power supply. For a few dollars more, I would have liked to have seen a brand like Meanwell. Now you can swap it out if you want as an aftermarket upgrade, but you will void the warranty. Now. What about the hot end? Well, the Rock 3 comes equipped with a clone of, a popular, of the popular E3D V6. This is one of the standout features on this printer, at least for me. When it comes time to change the nozzle, I'll most likely upgrade to the genuine E3D with a hardened steel nozzle so I can print with other materials like glow-in-the-dark, wood, metal filled, uh, as well as other filaments that have abrasive properties. This printer comes with a 3.5 inch color touchscreen that makes it easy to navigate through the menus. I also like the fact that it has a full size SD card slot, USB connection support, and an LED light. If you missed my live build of the Mingda Rock 3, you can click the card above or use the link in the description below. Before I get into the software, I'd like to know if you're getting value out of this review by leaving a comment below and smashing that like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing and clicking the bell for more videos just like this one. 
I was surprised to find that the Mingda included Repetier Host version 2.1.6 instead of Cura as they have in the past. For a new 3D printing hobbyist, Repetier Host can be a little intimidating at first glance. All Mingda DIY series 3D printers can be used with a variety of slicing software like Cura, Simplify 3D, and others. You are just going to have to set them up manually. Fortunately, Mingda has included an easy to understand installation and configuration guide. The included SD card comes with some pre-sliced models for you to print out of the box. Now, however, they don't include any filament to print the test files. The other STL, STL files can be sliced and printed out using your printer of choice. So if you made it this far in the video, the next question is how much? Well, on Amazon Canada, as of today, it is selling for $599.99. Now, Amazon US is selling it for $462.99. When you compare the price to the CR10S version 3, you're saving about $76. Let's face it, there is not one printer that's going to do it all. And the Mingda Rock 3 is an excellent example of that. In the pros column, we can look at the smaller footprint than the CR-10S because it doesn't have that side box. Everything's located underneath the bed of the printer. It has direct drive dual gear extruder. It has resumed printing after power failure, a 32-bit architecture with silent stepper drivers, dual Z lead axis screws, um, filament runout de detection, full-size SD card slot, which for me, guy who's got big meat hooks, works really great. A 3.5 inch color touch screen, large build volume, 320 by 320 by 400. And of course you can't beat the price. Now, as far as the cons go, there's only a couple. Now in the cons column, there's not much to complain about here, except for the fan noise. The fans are fairly loud. Now the reason for that is, is because they're using sleeve bearing fans. If you were to upgrade the fans at some point, you'll want to upgrade them with ball bearing fans. That will increase the airflow and also bring down that fan noise a little bit. The magnetic build plate also is not one of my favorite things because of the dual magnets that stick together. Um, I don't find the polarity great on them. Uh, so again, if you're going to print over 80 degrees, if you wanted to print something like ABS on this machine, which you could theoretically do, you are going to get slippage on that bed uh, or on the mat to the bed. And there's no auto bed leveling. So not a whole lot to really complain about here. So how would I rate this? Uh, the pros definitely outweigh the cons on this printer for me. Uh, it will become one of my printers that I use regularly for projects and for client work. So for that reason, I'm going to give this a five out of five hot ends. So question of the day, what are some of the features of this printer that stood out to you? Please leave your comments below and smash that like button. If this was your first time checking out my channel, then consider subscribing and becoming a member. I publish new videos on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and on Sundays I do a live stream called Ask for Help with my co-host and friend Brian Baker at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Members get some cool perks. Check them out below by clicking the Join button. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.